The PhotoPills photography app is packed with various tools to help you with your outdoor photography. And the one that it is most well known for is the planner. Today, I'm going to teach you how to plan a full moon image over the Statue of Liberty, and the steps I show you can be applied to any full moon image that you would like to plan. So stay tuned. Hey there, photographers, Brian Petrella here, and welcome to another episode of Photo Pills Friday. If this is your first time here, thank you for tuning in. The last few episodes were designed to orient you to the app, and in particular to the planner and the top panels and map layers. Today, we're going to apply some of those concepts and plan our first image together, which will be of the full moon behind the torch of the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Now, if you've never planned an image with photo pills before, then I think it's a good idea to practice with a composition that you've seen and know is possible at least at some point in time. And then you can see if you can plan that image. I've personally never taken a picture of the Statue of Liberty, but I have seen images of the moon above the statue. And so I know some version of the composition Position I have in mind is possible. And since I'm not in New York City, I can't scout the location in person. And so I'm going to show you how to plan an image when you're not physically at the location or when you're not already familiar with that location. So I'm going to start by asking myself two things. One, is the composition possible? And if so, where should my shooting position be relative to the Statue of Liberty to achieve the concept I have in mind? And two, if it is possible, then what day and what time will the event occur? Now, when you plan a moon image with a subject such as a statue or building, you will need to do a little research to find out the height of the object above the ground. If your subject is a mountain or a natural feature, then you don't need to worry about this as much because photo pills will already know that information from the terrain on the map in the planner. So I've already gone ahead and looked up the height of the Statue of Liberty from the ground level to the top of the flame of the torch, and it is 305 feet or 93 meters. So I've made a note of that number and we'll use it again shortly. Now let's dive into the app. So open the planner. And the first thing we're going to do is reset the planner so that we're all looking at the same screen. So in the planner, scroll the top bar all the way to the right till you get to the first top panel, which is the shadow calculator. And just make sure that the left icon of each of the top panels is off as you scroll through the top bar. So recall from our previous episodes that the icons appear darker when they're toggled off and brighter when they're toggled on. So once you've turned them all off, you should just see a red pin on the map. And this will make things look a little less confusing as we move forward. Now click on the load button at the bottom and in the search bar type the Statue of Liberty and click on it. Now our red pin is located at the Statue of Liberty and we need to make our first decision, which is where should my shooting position be? So to help answer this question, I need to think about two things, which is what view of the statue do I wanna have in my shot? Now, when I did a uh, search, most of the images I found were of the back of the statue with the moon above. So I know that composition is possible, but is it possible to capture the moon behind the torch with a front view of the statue as well? This might not be possible given the azimuth or direction of the moon relative to my chosen shooting position. It also might not be possible to get a front view of the statue with the moon if there is no access to the vantage point that I would like to have. So while this is on unlikely in a populated place like New York City, depending on your chosen location, you will need to think about things like public access or other objects in the line of sight when you're planning your image. So two, with that in mind, I need to figure out where to position myself so that I can see the front of the statue. And once I figure that out, then I can ask whether a moonshot from that position is possible. So to figure out our shooting spot, we need to use Google Maps or Google Earth to do a little scouting first. So let's hop onto the computer real quick. Okay, so here we are in Google Maps. And the first thing I'm gonna do is switch to satellite view. I just prefer that for scouting and I think it's easier to see different structures and whatnot. And so now I'm just gonna type in Statue of Liberty And here we are at the Statue of Liberty. You can see this is Ellis Island. And we can see that the statue is on this platform that looks sort of like a star shape. But, you know, I might not know exactly which way the statue is facing. So to figure that out, one thing that I can do is take my little 
yellow man for a street view and plop it down somewhere on the island. And now we can see that the Statue of Liberty is facing outwards to sea relative to this front point on the star. So that's great. Now we know which way she's oriented and we can click out of street view. So basically, if I want to get a shot where getting the moon behind the Statue of Liberty and I'm in front of her, then I need to be looking for places to shoot somewhere in this direction. So let's zoom out for a second and just sort of get a visual of what that would look like. So if I'm going off of the point of the star here outward, ideally I would be located somewhere in this region down here. However, I know that the moon sets in the west. And so if I'm down here more in the south, pointing northward or sort of northwest to get this perfectly positioned shot of the front of the statue, I'm unlikely to get a setting moon behind her because the moon sets in the west. So ideally, the moon would be sort of setting in this area, which means I need to be somewhere over here. If I go too far to the east of the statue, I'm going to get a sideways shot, and I still want to try to get that front angle. So I think I'm going to split the difference and look for something in this region over here. So let's zoom in on this area and see if anything looks like a potential shooting spot. So there are a lot of parking lot areas and whatnot. And here, here we see this lawn and pier with views of the Statue of Liberty. So that's very promising. So that's probably a public access point. So let's zoom in and see what that little pier looks like with street view. So let's plop our little man, say on this dot. And here we can see what the pier looks like. And hopefully that remains open 24-7. And if we rotate the map around, now here we can see the Statue of Liberty in view. And if we zoom in on the map, we can get a better understanding of which way she's facing. And it does look like here's the front point of the statue. So she's facing this way. And uh, we're sort of in between the front point and the next point over. And so we're still getting a pretty good view of the front of the statue. And I can imagine the moon setting here very nicely around the torch. And that's what I have in mind. So I'm going to say this is a good shooting spot. You can exit out of street view and sort of zoom out to get our bearings. We're going to be looking for this little pier now in photo pills. So Let's get back into PhotoPills and get our red pin, which is the observer's pin, set on our chosen shooting location. To do this, just zoom out and find our chosen shooting location, which is this little pier over here, and hold your thumb down and the red pin will relocate to that spot. We can always tap, hold, and drag the pin to adjust our shooting location if we need to further refine it. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put my observer's pin just right in the middle of this platform. Next, we need to swipe the top panels to the pin-to-pin -pin geodetic info panel, which is the second panel of the top bar. Tap the icon to turn it on. You will now see a black pin appear with a white dotted line connecting the black and red pins. The black pin tells you information about its location relative to the red pin. So let's put the black pin on the Statue of Liberty, or you would put it wherever your subject is where you want the moon to be. So to do this, I'm going to zoom way out so that I see the Statue of Liberty again. And I'm going to click, drag, and drop the black pin on the Statue of Liberty. And now I'm going to zoom in so that I can further refine that black pin location. And I would like the black pin to be right in the middle of the torch. Now let's zoom back out so that we can see the red pin as well. Okay, now look at the top bar. Here you will see three sections of information. The distance, which is the distance between the red and black pins, the azimuth, which is basically the direction of the black pin relative to the red pin measured in degrees from north, and the altitude difference, which is the difference in height between the ground levels of the red pin versus the black pin measured in either feet or meters and also given in degrees of relative elevation. If it's a positive number, then that tells you that the black pin is at a higher ground level than the red pin. And if it's a negative number, then that tells you that the black pin is lower than the red pin. Now note the black pin can only measure the actual ground level and not the height of a structure 
such as a statue or building. And this is why we needed to look up the height of the torch previously. And while we will have to take that measurement into account as we move forward with our calculations. At the very bottom of the top panel is where you will see the moon height or altitude above the ground of wherever the black pin is when the moon is aligned with the black pin. Just next to that in parentheses, the size of the moon is given and we will come back to that later. So in this example here, we see that my distance between my red and black pins is 1.5 miles. The azimuth is 299.8 degrees and the relative altitude difference between the pins is 16 feet or 0.11 degrees of elevation. So now we need to find out whether the moon will ever line up with the red and black pins. So the first thing we need to do to help answer this question is to turn on the moon map layer, which we learned about how to do in episode three. So scroll the top panel until you get to the sun and moon map layers panel, which is the third panel of the top bar. We previously turned these map layers off and now we're going to tap on the icon until it is a solid blue circle, which just indicates that only the moon layer is on. Now you can see that for the time and date I currently have on my timeline, that the moon is not going to set over the Statue of Liberty relative to my chosen location as shown by the dark blue line. To find out whether the moon will ever be centered behind the torch relative to my red pin shooting location, I need to ask Photopills whether the moon will ever set in alignment with the black pin. So scroll the top bar back to the pin to pin geodetic info panel and note the azimuth of the black pin relative to the red pin. This is the same azimuth we would like the moon to be relative to the red pin in our ideal scenario. So we need to ask Photopills whether or not the moon will ever set at that azimuth. To find out, click on the find button in the bottom bar. Click on moon at azimuth. At the top, we can change the date range we want Photopills to search. We could also change the azimuth if we needed to by clicking on numeric down below. The azimuth is currently set correctly at 299.8 degrees. And you'll note that the black pin is now blue, and that just indicates that Photopills is now looking for a moon that would appear at the azimuth that the black pin was at. Also note on the map the region that is shaded at the top. This is showing that the moon would never be at this range of azimuths or directions. So click on the date range, and from here you can select a specific start or end date, or if you tap on just the black area in the middle of the screen, you can now set sort of a time interval if you'd prefer. And I'm going to select five years to keep my options open. So just click done or back on Android. Now we're going to click on the search button in the top right corner. Here are a list of all the results that fit the parameters we set, which was the azimuth and date range. So the results are listed according to date, but also the elevation, altitude, and phase of the moon are also given. And you can tap on any of these titles to resort the results according to that heading. So since I'm interested in the full moon and how a full moon would appear at this azimuth, I'm going to click on phase and I'm going to click it twice to see all of the full moons at the top of the list. You can see there are a lot of full moons available at this azimuth in this date range. So this is good news for our plan, but we need to further refine our results. So let's hop back to the planner. One parameter that we have not yet considered is the height of the moon at our azimuth. I would like the moon to be centered behind the torch of the statue, if that's possible. So to calculate this, I need to know two things, the height of the torch from the ground level and the difference in elevation between the red and black pins. So the height of the torch above the ground is 305 feet, and the top panel is telling me that the altitude difference between the red and black pins is 16 feet. So all I have to do is add these two numbers together to find out what the apparent altitude the moon needs to be for my shot taken from the red pin position. So 305 plus 16 comes to 321 feet. So now let's see if that's possible. To find out, we're going to hit the find button again, but this time we're going to click on moon at azimuth in elevation. This looks very similar to what we were looking at before, but now we have the option of further refining our search by inputting the height or elevation of the moon that we want. So click on elevation. 
you will see it now highlighted with a little yellow underline and a graphic will appear in the middle of your screen. If you move the blue pin on the right, which represents the moon up and down, you can change the elevation and you can see that reflected in the numbers above. But the easier way to input altitude or elevation is to simply click on numeric down below. And if we had calculated the elevation in degrees, we could input that here, but instead we calculated the apparent height of the moon so let's enter that now in the third box there. And you can see that Photopills automatically calculates the elevation in degrees, which is 2.41 degrees. Now also a side note, you can tell Photopills to perform this search with a certain amount of wiggle room that will give you more options to choose from. And this wiggle room is the plus minus error range. And you can adjust that here to broaden or narrow your search results. You can also change this for the azimuth as well. I'm putting in the error at plus or minus 0.25 for both the azimuth and the elevation. And that's pretty selective, but I can always increase this number later if there are no results that are found within these parameters. So now if we hit search in the top right corner again, Photopills will try to find the dates and times when the moon will appear at our chosen azimuth and at our chosen elevation. So here are our results with our selected parameters shown at the top in yellow. And I'm only interested in the full moon. So again, I'm going to just tap on the phase button twice to get the full moons to sort at the top of the list. And you can see that our results are narrowed down quite a bit from before with only a handful of full moons that will fit our parameters. So let's take a closer look at the numbers and select one that will be closest to the conditions we want. So remember, we wanted our azimuth at 299.8 degrees and our elevation at 2.41 degrees. And from our results, it doesn't look like we have one that fits our parameters perfectly. So we'll have to pick one that's just the closest. And so I'm gonna say that's gonna be either the first or second choice. So the colors of the phases of the moon indicate here what the natural light will look like on that given date or time. And like with other colors represented in photopills, Orange indicates golden hour, dark blue or purple indicates twilight, light blue indicates daytime, and black indicates nighttime. So within my results, I can choose between a golden hour shot or a blue hour shot. And I like the idea of either, but I'm gonna select the blue hour shot because it's happening before the golden hour shot. So the blue hour shot is happening in December of 2020. The golden hour shot is happening in January of 2024. So if I ever want to retake the shot, I always have the option of trying again in 2024. So I'm going to go ahead and load the second one into my planner by clicking on it. So now the plan is loaded and I should be able to get the shot I imagined on December 29th, 2020 at 6.37 a.m. So that's pretty exciting. Now I can check the results of the plan and further refine things if I need to. Let's now zoom way in on the torch and make sure that the moon azimuth line from the moon map layer is aligned with the dotted white line that connects the black and red pins. So if I zoom way in, I can see that they actually are not perfectly aligned. And I can either change the timeline or modify the location of the red pin to help align these two lines better. So let's first move the timeline and see if that changes anything by changing the shooting time by a few seconds or minutes and see if that would help. I want to keep in mind though that I don't want the height of the moon to change too much. So tap and hold on the timeline to expand it from a 24 hour timeline to a one hour timeline. And this makes moving the timeline in more precise ways much easier. So scroll the timeline back and forth slowly until the blue and white dotted lines align. Notice that as we align the blue line with the white dotted line, the moon height has now changed to 342 feet, which is about 20 feet higher than we would like it to be. So the next thing we're going to do is try moving the red pin a little to see if by changing the azimuth just a little bit, can we get these lines aligned better. So let's go nudge the red pin over a bit. I'm going to see what happens if I go all the way to the left on this platform. So now my azimuth, as I see in the top bar, is 300 degrees. So now let's zoom back over to the black pin and move the timeline slightly again to align the lines and check the moon height. And now that I have those lines aligned, I can see that actually 
the moon height is at 321 feet, which is exactly what we wanted. So that is exciting. Note that in the top panel, Photopills is also telling us how big the moon will appear at our shooting distance from the black pin. It says it'll be 70 feet in diameter, but this is hard to imagine what this means relative to the size of the statue. Luckily, we can see how wide the moon will appear for this plan by going into the map settings, clicking on the moon map layer, and we can turn on show moon size. Click done or back, and now you'll see a diffuse blue shaded area on either side of the blue moon line, and this shows the diameter of the moon. And you can see that the width of the moon will appear to be about the same width of the statue for this shot on this date and time, and that's pretty cool. Now, if you wanna save this plan, all you have to do is go down to the bottom and click on save, hit plan, click on new plan, give the plan a name, click save, and now the plan will be stored in Photopills under My Stuff. So now you know how to plan a moon image using Photopills. Another way that Photopills can help with planning images and making sure that you're able to capture the image you have in mind is figuring out your field of view and your depth of field, given your shooting position and your camera and lens combinations. So I will teach you how to use these tools in next week's video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.